Uh, so Chita is a 2007 Echoing Green Fellow and the founder of an organization called Khmer Legacies, which is a powerful video archive project in which younger Cambodians and Cambodian Americans interview their relatives uh, about their experiences uh, surviving the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, but before the uh, Khmer Legacies was in your mind's eye, you were in television news, which is a prestigious job, but you knew it wasn't quite right for you. What was quite right for you, what was sparked, uh, occurred because of a fateful evening, uh, going home two years into your career when you visit your parents one Christmas in uh, Dallas, Texas. So with that, I'm going to read a short passage and then we're going to have a short chat with Sochita. So Cheetah's father waited until the children were assembled. Then he shut the door. Mrs. Pub was already sitting on the bed. Her face looked pale and soft. Pa and I have something to tell you, Mrs. Pub said. She clasped her hands between her knees and took a deep breath. Pa is not my first husband, Mrs. Pub said, looking at Sochita. I was married to another man, and your brother is his son. Turning to Sochita's sisters, Mrs. Pub said, these are my sister's children. Pa and I took them in when she died. Tears rose in Mrs. Pub's eyes, and the tip of her nose turned red. So Cheetah stared at her mother. Questions raced through her mind. She looked around the room. Her sister's faces suddenly appeared foreign. Her brother's narrow shoulders and long arms, which she always attributed to her father, seemed out of place. Even her parents seemed like strangers. Behind her, so Cheetah's father choked back a sob. She turned to hug him, but before she could get her arms around him, he ducked inside the bathroom and locked the door. The three children he raised as his own immediately followed him, assuring him that everything was all right. So Cheetah remained alone in the bedroom, enveloped in silence. Very powerful. So, so Cheetah, how did you, what you learned that day change your life and your career? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give this to you. Uh, it was obviously a very shocking moment for me because I had grown up this moment, you know, for 23 years believing that I had grown up in a normal nuclear family with two parents and four children. And suddenly I learned that my two sisters are actually my biological cousins. My brother is my half-brother and I'm the only child of my two parents. And it was one of those moments in your life when it feels like the camera kind of backs out, you know, when you can see the, the full scope and the, the, the trajectory that my ancestors, you know, my parents had to make in order to create this family out of a patchwork of survivors and stitch them together and uh, smuggle all of those lives across the border from Cambodia to Thailand in the middle of the night um, over landmines and uh, bodies uh, in order to give me a life in the United States. And um, it was a moment where I got, I got a taste of the courage that it took for my parents to build this family and to stay together. And whenever I'm facing a difficult pass, whether it's how on earth I'm going to start a new nonprofit organization with no experience in being 27 years old, <laughs> or, um, or how am I going to make a documentary film when I'm 23 and I have no experience and don't even know how to use a camera. <laughs> um, in those moments, I can think about my parents and I can think about the courage it took for them, the, the will to survive that they had in order to get through the Khmer Rouge years and uh, the humility in order to rebuild themselves anew in America. It's very powerful. You can keep that. I think it, people can hear me. Okay. <laughs> my second question is your, your work was very personal. It's connected to your identity. And I'm curious, for those of us in the room whose work is connected, can you tell us you know, what that's been like for you and how some lessons learned about connecting those two pieces? Sure. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I was an English major, and I wanted to be a poetry professor for a long time. And then I worked in television, and so I always knew I had this strength in understanding narratives and storytelling. And I knew that my story was what I could use to sell Khmer Legacies. 
because when I started the organization, I was very young, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know a lot of wealthy people. Um, I really was in head over, uh, like, you know, what over my head, definitely. Um, so I had no track record, but what I had was this story. And I felt like I could tell this story and sell this story and compel people to believe in its mission based upon the story. So in the beginning, it was my greatest asset. Uh, eventually, I had to prove myself. You know, you, then you kind of have to validate um, what you put forth. But in the beginning, it, it helped to get me traction. My last question for you is, what one or two pieces of advice you have for the group or for folks in general about developing a meaningful impact-driven career? Sure. Um, I, I, when I think about leadership and then people who are looking to start new organizations or just even cutting a different kind of path in your career, you know, there are kinds of two, two different kinds of leaders. I think people who are attracted to the power that comes with being a leader, and then people who are attracted toward a problem and toward solving a problem. And I think um, the issue with the first kind of leader is that eventually that kind of leadership manifests itself in a crisis of meaning. And then the second kind of leader, if you rely on the problem, if you rely on being compelled by giving yourself over to a commitment and a cause that is bigger than yourself, I think you always have that drive, you always have that motivation, and you allow the problem to call you into action, in, into a mission. Um, and that was certainly my case, I think. We call that moment of obligation at Echo and Green. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah. So for, for people, I think, who are looking for the next step in a meaningful career, I would think about what is the problem in the world that's calling you forth to act.